what is up youtube before i move on to the video i just really want to say uh, thanks a lot for watching my video and subscribing to my channel uh it is really helping me a lot uh, i'm getting a lot of views recently uh which is really exciting sorry i haven't been posting that much lately i had uh, other commitments but i was also working uh, for my fitness so I was kind of busy with that but now onwards i'm going to post uh, a bit more frequently uh, on my youtube channel and then with my blogs as well and even with my blogs i'm getting a lot of traffic lately uh it's really exciting uh, that everyone is loving that my content uh really excited to move forward so yeah moving on to the video this video is going to be about uh using uh pi sparks ml lib so it's a machine learning library within spark uh, i'm going to get uh start with like an introduction to what exactly it is and where you can use it and also we will do something hands on and create a primitive ma machine learning model out of a simple data most likely it's going to be a regression or classification uh, solution to a problem but yeah uh, i'm going to explore a bit more uh, kind of hand it out on how to navigate your way through within the spark library right um uh, so yep let's just get started with the video all right so before we act, move on to the actual machine learning part on pi spark uh, i just want to do a quick recap from my previous article and video spark is a, a framework that kind of allows you to build uh, like super scalable pipelines uh and then pi pi spark kind of allows you to do the same thing in python uh so it's just a wrap around it you use this to create like this big data processing jobs uh, dis uh deploy them on clusters so that they execute this on like uh big sets of like huge chunks of data across a distributed network of computers and um uh, yep it allows you to scale really fast right so yeah it makes sense uh, for an engine to use spark but then uh there is like other aspects of spark which i wanted to cover within this video so within this video you can see uh i wanted to introduce uh, a few other libraries that kind of exist um within the ecosystem of spark so basically for what we have been using now is like sql and data frames so it, uh, the data frames api kind of exists within py spark you can easily use it uh very similar to pandas uh, data frames uh and you can use it to process data the one which we want to talk about is the ml lib the machine learning library so within spark uh, they kind of includes an ecosystem of building all these different machine learning models and packages you can just use directly and that's what we're going to introduce here i'm mostly familiar with uh, ml lib and sql data frames uh, i haven't used graph x but yeah probably for a future video i'm going to try it out later all right so just before we move forward let's look at some quick indexes on how popular pi spark is uh in the internet like uh in the world wide web i just wanted i was just checking out the 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 google trends for pi spark keywords uh from for the for last 5 years it's been gradually growing across time and um, pretty popular till now and i was also looking at the github statistics like how popular and how well maintained the library is so you can see it's like 30 30k stars uh almost like um gets new comments comments almost every day and uh, really well maintained as a library the pashe ecosystem in in general is quite maintained so the spark being part of it is um basically you get like uh, 11 stars a day on an average like 8 to 9 folks a day or like uh, people are forking uh, in a day on an average then commits are like nine around nine commits a day so something like that so it, uh, we can totally see spark library going um, growing day by day in every day in terms of popularity the code uh, commits and even the usage so something like that before we move uh, into actually coding a model uh The first thing I would uh, really recommend is um uh, discovering via documentation. In the main websites uh, spark.apache.org uh go to the latest release of the documentation and within that uh you can see there's like programming guides. For example, if I wanted to create a a classification model or or a regression model, uh the best and easiest way to do is uh go via the the documentation within PySpark. There's like machine learning library ML lib. So we're going to focus on that right now. so uh click on ml lib so we're going to focus on the classification and regression so on, on the left tab you can see uh there's a hyperlink once you click on that uh all the details on whatever exist what kind of different algorithms that exist within spark library uh in terms of classification regression uh, are easily listed down and you can easily navigate your way through so if you want to do like a random forest classifier a gradient boost reclassifier or even within regression you got multiple options like uh 
uh, decision tree regression, survival regression, isotonic regression, and the simpler one is like the linear regression. So all these algorithms are already listed, and the best part is they come with an example. So for example, if I click on uh, the linear regression, you get uh, all the details about this part of the library, uh, the, the interface you're gonna work with, and then it also comes with an example, uh, which is like a great bonus, right? So within this example, you can see how the syntax of the code is, how you can just uh, create an LR, which is a linear regressor with a few parameters and then just fit your data set according to it. All right, moving on, we're gonna uh, try to build a linear regression model out of PySpark. But yeah, I, I found this uh, simple data set on Kaggle, the real estate prediction uh, data set. Uh, it's got solutions as well. I'm, I'm just gonna use the data set and try to build a regression model, a simple regression model out of this uh, uh, in PySpark. So that's the idea. And uh, with, uh, about the data set, it's, it's, it contains a few columns only. It contains uh, the transaction date, the age of the house, uh, when this transaction happened, the distance to the MRT, the metro station, uh, the number of convenience stores nearby, and latitude, longitude. Uh, we're gonna predict the house price uh, out of all these, uh, uh, the X, which would be the features. So yeah, once you download the data set, um, the first thing you need to do, you need to upload it uh, within your Jupyter Notebook using this button, or you can do otherwise, or whatever way you would want. I created a sample notebook, uh, so it just create a, a local ini initiation of Spark session. So from this, I'm, I get a Spark session. And after that, I, I kind of try to read the data set. I, and to just read the data set, you need to do spark.read.csv and provide the name and the path. Uh, just be mindful of keeping header true when you're trying to read a CSV. So let's just show 10 rows how the data looks like. So you can see the S number, the transaction date, we have the transaction date, we have the house age, we have the distance near to MRT station. Uh, so the, these are very, these are all continuous values, right? So um, all of these continuous values are can be easily used to use within a regressor model. So yeah, so let's try to create that. Uh, let's try to use it and uh, use these X to pass them as, a fe as features and try to predict the Y. So yeah, so the best, uh, um, so the main idea of uh, being a data scientist slash data engineer is to do you to do all these different transformation and bring your data set into the right format. So once you have this data, you manipulate it and you just see uh, what different aspects are looking useful. So yeah, for me personally, uh, the distance from the MRT station is a big factor. Uh, within Kegel, you can also see this uh, variation. A lot of the houses are uh, within uh, the first segment, uh, looks like it and uh, very close by to the MRT station and it would have a direct correlation from my from my hunch it would have a direct correlation with the price so yeah uh, that's what we're going to figure it out and try to train our model on so the next step would would be to like the the, the, the next step would be like to further evaluate this data in detail but yeah right now our data set is very simple so what we're going to do we're going to try to create a simple model so yeah so so to start building a model we would need to kind of uh, format our data frame in the right fo uh, fashion. So the idea is to keep, uh, so the idea would be to keep all these, uh, the continuous values into uh, uh, the input column, which would be the features. So to, to create this format, we're gonna use an inbuilt uh, function called vector assembler. So I don't know if you've used this before, vector assembler in PySpark. So within the documentation, just you can go and see where it kind of exists and try to import it. So yeah, this vector assembler is gonna give uh, where it exists. So yeah, and it's it's gonna give you a, a sample code as well, right? So so yeah, from PySpark.ml linglang, you can do the vectors and vector assembler. You can easily import. So I'm gonna use these two uh, as an import uh, to create my features. Once you have the vector assembler you need to create, uh, transform this data and provide these input columns. Yeah, input columns. Uh, the input columns would be the real estate data. Uh, so the real estate columns. So let's look at these columns. Uh, so yeah, let, let me just look at these columns. So yeah, we would need these uh, 
Yeah, for now, let's keep... It won't make sense to keep Platinum in the long run, but yeah, for now, let's just keep it to see uh, if they're close by, though, because anyways, these are very continuous values. So uh, the input columns should be in an array format. So there should be something like this. So let's just quickly go back and look at the documentation, how they're doing it. So yeah, the input co columns. Yeah, so these are all the features I'm going to use and we call them as features as an output column. So yeah, we call them as features as an output column. So let's uh, keep it like that. Let's call them features. So exactly, and this is how it's gonna work. So we're gonna call this as an assembler. This is assembling uh, the data all together in one place. So yeah, so the next step would be to transform from this assembler. So we're gonna use the assembler created and uh, transform our data set. So basically we're gonna pass in the real estate data set uh, from it and yeah. And we can always go back to the documentation and see how, what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're doing. So they just need to transform the data set and then it's going to have the feature and the column in, 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 a, in the right format. So the, we're going to call it uh, train, no, no, not yet, data set for now. So yeah, that's uh, the, the problem with the data set. Uh, simple problem, yeah, but it kind of uh, arise when you're trying to debug the code. So uh, when I try to transform this uh, real estate data set, uh, sorry for now, I, I did not notice this before. Basically, it points out an error that all these, these columns are uh, basically uh, not supported in terms of uh, the type of the column uh, because uh, most likely it's not, they're not in like the continuous value format. So I went back to see what exactly uh, the column type is. So you can see the print schema, sorry, I did not notice earlier. Uh, it's all, all in strings. So the idea is what would, the idea would be to con uh, convert these into continuous values so yeah um, as was I uh, pointing out I just need to change the, the, the data type for all these columns so the best way to do it for uh, for this one would be when I read this data set I would need to pass around pass in the schema which says oh yeah this is the column name and this should be the data type for the column so that's the idea uh, we can also do like info schema but let me try it quickly with in info schema it should do the same thing which happened already but yeah won't harm to try it out at least. Oh yeah, I would just need to place it. Uh, option. So yeah, the info schema kind of worked. So no need to do a custom schema. Uh, yeah, that's why I was got confused. I usually use this parameter like info schema most of the time. Uh, but yeah, it makes sense to use, uh, but, but when you have a very specific application, it would totally make sense to use something like a custom, custom schema. So yeah, moving back, uh, trying to rerun uh, whatever I've done for these values. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna do a very similar thing, vec vector assembler and passing all these value to the assembler and try to in, uh, index it over my data set. Yep, so yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so I just need to have these uh, two columns would be uh, select uh, features and uh, the next would be via the house price, right? I would just rename it, <laughs> otherwise it's like too long. And I'm gonna do, yeah, show two rows. So yeah. Uh, as you can see now we have the features in in uh, one row and the next is like in the second row so it makes sense so now these features would, would try to predict when you train the model so the model will fit on all these features and the housing values yep i i just treat it as a final data that's what we call it and uh, from this final data i'm trying to create a regression model uh by doing a train and test split so i get the train data which is like 70 percent of this data so uh spicebug has all these inbuilt function called random split so what it's doing, it's within all these like four, 400 rows, it's splitting in ram randomly into like 70% uh, goes into the train data object and 30% uh, goes into test. It makes sense because you're training uh, the data on these values and from the test data, we're gonna evaluate our model and see like how it's working. So yeah, uh, 
within uh, so now the next step would be to create a regressor model so the best part is like it's only a few lines of code uh, you, you import this uh, uh, object called linear regressor and the in, within the linear regressor you pass in the the label column the the, the y for this uh, model so let's just do that it creates an lr and once you create an error, you try to fit it over the data set because your data set is already transformed. It has features and it has uh, the unit area. You just pass in the training data and it should work and create the model. So, so I haven't executed this. Yeah, so now I have train and test split. Uh, yeah, once you create, click on train data, it's gonna give you a few stats. Yeah, and because it's like a very simple data set and uh, it's very small. Uh, and it's gonna give a few warnings uh, right now, but let's ignore for the sake of it for now and try to print in a few coefficients. So yeah, I think, uh, yeah, so uh, for a simple model, it makes sense and uh, the RMSC, uh, yeah, right now it's uh, not in detail, but yeah, with the data we have, I think it's kind of okay. Uh, we would need a further evaluation and compare it with uh, a few more things. But yeah, for now I would leave, leave it up to just this step. Uh, because this is like more of a get, getting started with something like uh, Spark ML Lib. All right, uh, uh, I think that's it in terms of this video um, where we kind of covered the uh, basics of creating uh, a linear regressor using uh, PySpark ML Lib. So yeah, that's most of it uh, on this part. Uh, so if you got value out of this video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps with the algorithm. See you in the next video.